Burt Reynolds was a big name in movies, loved for his charm and great acting. Many people found him inspiring. Have you ever felt inspired by him? Share a story about how he made a difference in your life. He really stood out among other actors of his time. What do you think made him different from the rest? Let's share memories about this famous star. Keep an eye out for fun facts about him in this video. Share your stories below. In his time and beyond, he left a significant mark on the film industry. His charismatic performances and unique approach to roles influenced Hollywood. He changed how people saw action and comedy movies inspiring many actors. He challenged what it meant to be tough on screen, showing vulnerability alongside strength. His ability to mix humor with action made his movies stand out, gaining him a dedicated following and critical praise. He took on roles that broke stereotypes and showed complex characters, pushing for more interesting stories in mainstream movies. Not just an actor, he also directed and produced, showing his skill behind the scenes. His influence even reached how movies were marketed and promoted, showing his deep understanding of the industry. Overall, he had a profound effect on Hollywood, leaving behind a lasting impact that still inspires today. In one role, he worked alongside director Robert Aldrich to convince Catherine Deneuve to join the cast, although she preferred not to rehearse scenes. In another film, he initially turned down a sequel opportunity, but changed his mind when offered the chance to direct as well. He mentioned that if he had to pick between acting and directing, directing would be his primary choice. Interestingly, a co-star from a previous film also appeared in this sequel, showcasing a unique connection in his career. In the world of entertainment, one actor's journey stands out as a testament to perseverance and talent. Throughout his career, he took on various roles that showcased his ability to captivate audiences. One notable instance was his portrayal of a congressman in a film that marked a significant return for him. Prior to this role, he had appeared in smaller movie parts, but it was this performance that truly captured viewers' attention. Additionally, he starred in another film where he once again displayed his acting skills, produced by him, and a collaborator, signifying a partnership that became synonymous with quality cinema. His on-screen presence was magnetic, drawing audiences into the stories he brought to life. His performances went beyond acting. They were expert interpretations of characters that resonated with viewers worldwide. Through his work, he made a lasting impact on the film industry, shaping cinematic history with his talent and dedication. Whether he played a congressman or a lieutenant, he consistently proved why he was a force to be reckoned with in Hollywood. In the world of entertainment, one individual stood out for his memorable performances and contributions to cinema. He starred in numerous noteworthy films, earning recognition and awards for his work. One of his notable roles was in a 1972 film where he portrayed a character named Lewis Medlock, receiving critical acclaim for his performance. Additionally, he played a key role in a hit film from 1977, which became one of the highest grossing movies of its time. In 1997, he delivered another remarkable performance, garnering an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Throughout his career, he received accolades such as a Golden Globe and an Emmy Award, his talent and charisma left a lasting impression on audiences, solidifying his status as one of the most celebrated actors of his era. In the world of Hollywood, a rising actor sought guidance from esteemed directors, finding mentors in industry legends. Despite a swift climb to stardom, he faced challenges on set, leading to his departure from a particular project. However, it was in another production where his talent truly shined. There, he formed a deep bond with a fellow actor, learning from each other and bringing authenticity to their on-screen chemistry. With every new role, he demonstrated his dedication to improving his craft, seeking advice from experienced professionals. Through his determination, he left a lasting impact on the industry, inspiring future actors. This narrative reflects the resilient spirit of a Hollywood icon. In various films, a well-known actor showcased his versatility, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. He portrayed Lieutenant Phil Gaines in a movie that highlighted his acting range, alongside a co-star who later reunited with him in another film. His on-screen presence added depth and charisma to the dynamic between him and his fellow actors. In a different film, he shared the screen with a talented actress who brought a unique energy to her role. There's a playful anecdote about her commitment to character, adding an amusing touch to the set. One of his notable roles was as Yaqui Joe in a film that paired him with a legendary actor. Despite his young age, he held his own alongside his co-star, showcasing his talent and commanding presence on screen. 
These moments from his filmography highlight his ability to captivate audiences with his performances, leaving a lasting impression on cinema history. His impact on the industry continues to be celebrated and remembered fondly. In The Longest Yard, he portrayed Paul Crewe alongside actors who had experience in professional football. He himself played for Florida State University and was drafted by the Baltimore Colts. Another actor, Mike Henry, had played for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Los Angeles Rams, while Joe Capp served as quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings and Ray Nitschke as a middle linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. Purvis Atkins also had a football career with the Los Angeles Rams, Washington Redskins, and Oakland Raiders. He had an adopted brother named Jimmy James Hooks Reynolds. In 100 Rifles, he took on the role of Yaqui Joe, portraying a Yaqui Indian. Prior to this film, he had played characters of Native American descent in television series like Gunsmoke and Hawk. Despite claims of having Native American ancestry, it was never officially confirmed. Following an unprecedented surge in popularity spurred by a blockbuster movie, the car featured in the film experienced a staggering 500% increase in sales. In recognition of his pivotal role in this success, the actor received a heartfelt promise from the car company, a brand new vehicle annually for five years. The presence of the specific car model, showcased expertly in the movie, became memorable in cinematic history. However, the actor's impact wasn't confined to high-speed chases. Another movie depicted the adrenaline-filled world of stunt work and Hollywood glamour. Throughout his career, the actor explored various aspects of movie making, from on-location filming to scriptwriting intricacies and Hollywood's behind-the-scenes dynamics. One notable peak in his career was a critically acclaimed movie that earned an Oscar nomination. Through nuanced performances and unwavering dedication, the actor captivated global audiences, leaving a profound influence on aspiring talents in the industry. He turned down a lead role in M.A.S.H. because he wasn't keen on the cast, Tom Skerritt ended up taking the part instead. Reynolds' first big hit was as Sam Whiskey in the film Sam Whiskey. In Deliverance, he and John Voight had different approaches to their roles, with Voight being more meticulous, while Reynolds preferred a quicker pace. Despite their differences, director Borman found their dynamic beneficial. In the book 1000 Facts About Actors of All, too, it's noted that his favorite actor was the English character actor Richard Griffiths. Canadian electronics store Future Shop famously referred to his Smokey and the Bandit car and set up as the Burke, showcasing its 2008 HDTV and subwoofer. During the filming of The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing, a tragic incident occurred involving Sarah Miles' business manager boyfriend. He was found dead in her Gila Bend as motel room leading to a media frenzy. The official cause of death was ruled as suicide by overdose, but questions lingered due to conflicting evidence. It was later revealed that Miles and her boyfriend had been having an affair, which contributed to the dissolution of her marriage. This incident brought unwanted attention to him, as Miles sought refuge in his room after the altercation. He and Miles were compelled to testify at the inquest, shedding light on the complexities of the situation. The aftermath of this event had a lasting impact on those involved. In Boogie Nights, he brought the charismatic Jack Horner to life anchoring the film with his magnetic presence alongside a stellar ensemble cast, which included luminaries such as Julian Moore and the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. The movie garnered widespread acclaim, with its compelling narrative earning it five Oscar nominations, one of which was his own. Before his breakout role in Boogie Nights, he had caught the attention of Hollywood as a potential lead in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, a testament to his early talent and potential in the industry. Interestingly, tales of his extravagant spending were not uncommon, with reports surfacing of him once dropping a hefty 12200 on a bespoke hairpiece. Such a lavish expense only underscored his commitment to his appearance and style, showcasing a dedication that matched his on-screen performances. Truly, Burt Reynolds was a figure of both flair and substance in the world of cinema. Ironically, he earned a Golden Globe nomination for his role in The Longest Yard, but also faced criticism for his performance in the 2005 remake. He portrayed different characters throughout his career, like Jay Grobart in The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. The author initially envisioned another actor for the lead, but the role became synonymous with him. He also took on the role of Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. The story's origins trace back to journalist Larry L. King's Playboy article, which gained international attention. King was vocal about his disapproval of the film's changes and the casting choices, leading to public confrontations that never escalated beyond verbal disputes. 
In a notable role as Jack Horner in Boogie Nights, he had a strained relationship with the director and disavowed the film until his passing. Even after winning a Golden Globe for his performance, he sold it off. This contrasted with his experience in striptease, where he pursued a role, took a pay cut, and actively sought the part. Additionally, he co-owned a NAS gay AR team, showcasing his diverse interests beyond acting. Despite these very experiences, he never reunited professionally with the Boogie Nights director or his co-stars, though they have spoken positively about him and his talents. A Florida State University graduate from 1958, he gained fame for his many talents in showbiz. Apart from his studies, he shined as an actor on the big screen. In the movie Hustle, he played Lieutenant Phil Gaines, cruising around in a cool 1973 Ford Mustang convertible, winning over audiences with his charm. Sadly, he passed away before filming Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino, where he was set to play George Spahn. Bruce Dern took over the role. This showed how unpredictable the entertainment industry can be, leaving fans to wonder about what might have been. One of his memorable roles was as Rick Dalton in the TV episode All the Streets Are Silent, showing his talent and depth as an actor. His performances left a lasting impact on cinema, reminding us of his talent long after his name is forgotten. In movies like The Longest Yard and Gator, he really showed his talent, often working closely with actor James Hampton. They made a great team on screen, capturing audiences with their charm and chemistry. They also acted together in Fade In, Hustle, and WW, and the Dixie Dance Kings. People loved how real they made their characters feel. Besides acting, he also tried his hand at running a dinner theater in Jupiter, Florida. It wasn't just a business for him. He was passionate about giving new entertainers a chance to shine. The theater became a hotspot for up-and-coming performers to practice their craft and get noticed. But even though his acting got a lot of praise and attention, money problems hit the theater hard. It ended up going bankrupt and had to close down in the late 90s. But that didn't stop him from loving what he did. He really put his heart into his roles, especially in Gator, where he worked with James Best to make the character even more interesting. He's remembered as someone who did a lot in the entertainment world and tried new things, inspiring others to do the same. His work still means a lot to fans and people trying to make it in showbiz. And that's the story of how he left his mark on the world, even though he faced some tough times along the way. In a classic Western movie, a renowned actor starred alongside other notable figures. He shared the screen with Jim Brown and Raquel Welch. Known for his humor and confidence, he jokingly requested the producers to focus on bare chess and give him more lines. Later in his career, he had the pleasure of collaborating with his favorite mentor, who made a memorable appearance in one of his films. This mentor greatly influenced his acting skills. His final movie role was in a touching drama directed by Stephen Wallis. This film allowed him to display his acting abilities in a role that connected with audiences. As a Hollywood icon and beloved performer, he continues to inspire new generations. In The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, he portrayed Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd alongside Jim Neighbors, both sons of Southern policemen. It's a role that showcased his versatility. In Deliverance, directed by Sir John Borman, he played Lewis. Initially, Borman considered Lee Marvin and Marlon Brando for the roles of Ed and Lewis. However, after concerns about their age and physical demands of the role, John Voight and he were cast instead. This film marked the fourth collaboration between him and Dom DeLuise. Unlike their previous movies where they played friends, here they took on antagonistic roles, adding depth to their partnership. In a notable role, he ensured a particular actor had a part, but due to unforeseen circumstances, the actor couldn't make it. Instead, another actor stepped into the role, delivering a surprising performance. However, he couldn't help but wonder how the dynamic would have shifted with the initial actor's presence. During production, tensions ran high as he found himself at odds with a visionary director. Their creative differences often sparked heated debates on set, but despite the clashes, he acknowledged the director's talent. Interestingly, the director remained eager to collaborate further and extended an offer for him to join the cast of another project. However, he respectfully declined, opting to explore other projects that aligned more closely with his artistic vision at the time. While filming, a chilling incident occurred that could have had dire consequences. Engulfed in a stunt gone awry, he found himself dangerously close to being engulfed in flames. Miraculously, he emerged from the ordeal relatively unscathed, though the intensity of the scene was palpable. Despite the risks, his commitment to his craft remained unwavering, and the unforgettable moment ultimately made it into the final cut of the film, serving as a powerful demonstration of his dedication 
and fearlessness as an actor. In Hooper, he played Sonny Hooper, sharing the screen with James Best, known for his role as Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane in the Dukes of Hazard TV series. In the movie remake of the Dukes of Hazard, he took on the role of Jefferson Davis Bosshawk. As Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, he ended up with a double hernia from lifting Dolly Parton during filming. He often joked with her about it, saying he'd think of her whenever he felt the pain. In Hustle, he portrayed Lieutenant Phil Gaines, one of four films he made in 1975. These roles showcase his versatility as an actor and his ability to tackle various characters with ease. In a movie called Hustle, Reynolds played a character named Lieutenant Phil Gaines sharing the spotlight with Catherine Deneuve. Another film, Deliverance, showed how well he could act by featuring him as Lewis. This role stuck with people for a long time. Making Deliverance wasn't easy like when Ned Beatty had a scary moment in the Chattagher River, but Reynolds was proud of his work on the film. After Deliverance, he kept impressing audiences with great performances in movies like Smokey and The Bandit and Starting Over. These films showed his talent in different types of stories and made him a big star in Hollywood. All this adds up to a remarkable career in the movies. Amidst the era of Western films from the mid-1960s to the early 1970s, one actor stood out for his diverse roles and memorable performances. Venturing into sequel territory for the first time, he capitalized on the success of his earlier film and showcased his ability to carry a character forward in an evolving narrative. His portrayal in Gator marked a significant step in his career, demonstrating versatility and charisma that endeared him to audiences worldwide. In another film, shot in Spain, he portrayed a character named Yaqui Joe, which stood out from typical spaghetti westerns due to its distinctly American production, direction, and crew. This departure from his earlier work further solidified his status as a talented actor within the genre. Throughout his western roles, he immersed himself in rugged landscapes and portrayed larger-than-life characters with ease. Films like Sam Whiskey and The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing showcased his range and left a lasting impression on audiences. From the dusty trails of the Old West to the bustling sets of Hollywood, his talent transcended borders and generations, leaving a lasting impact on film history. In his role as Jack Horner in Boogie Nights, he delved into his character by visiting porn sets and conversing with real porn actors. He later remarked that the experience left him feeling the need to wear rubber gloves and take a thorough shower afterward. Interestingly, many of the porn actors sought advice from him on how to obtain a Screen Actors Guild card. Although he declined the role of Edward Lewis in Pretty Woman, he later admitted that seeing the film and witnessing the love-making scenes with Julia Roberts made him regret turning down the part. In the movie Hooper, he shared the screen with his girlfriend at the time, Sally Field, which was a recurring theme in their collaborations. Throughout their films together, Field portrayed his character's romantic interest, a pattern evident in Smokey, and the bandit Hooper, Smokey, and the bandit Roman II, and the end. In one of his notable roles, he played a sheriff in a movie set in Texas. He also starred in two other movies with the same actor during the early 1980s, where they showed great chemistry together. Another memorable role was in a film called Gator, where he portrayed a character named Gator McCluskey with a famous song by Jerry Reed. He showed his acting skills in a movie called Hustle, playing a character named Lieutenant Phil Gaines with depth and charm. Hustle also made references to a famous French movie, adding complexity to the story. Interestingly, his co-star Catherine Deneuve worked well with the director Claude Lelouch in other films. These roles showcased his talent and ability to play different characters in Hollywood. Known for his roles in memorable movies like Hooper, Smokey, and the Bandit, and Boogie Nights, he left a lasting impression on the world of movies. His role as Sonny Hooper showed his talent, and it's noteworthy that both he and the co-writer of Hooper passed away within days of each other in 2018. The idea for Smokey and the Bandit came from a real-life event involving him and Hal Needham. Needham, who was his stunt double, had a run-in with bootlegging Coors beer, which inspired the plot of the film and contributed to its success. Initially unsure about playing Jack Horner in Boogie Nights due to discomfort with the film's subject matter, he eventually took on the role. His agent and director convinced him, and he ended up delivering a performance that earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Despite his initial doubts, his portrayal added depth to the character and resonated with audiences, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In these instances, he faced challenges head-on and showed his talent, leaving a lasting impression on the film industry that is still felt today. 
In the world of film, there's an actor known for his versatility and memorable performances. One notable role saw him as Jack Horner in a film called Boogie Nights, while another cast him as Yaqui Joe in 100 Rifles. Throughout his career, he showcased a range of characters that left a lasting impression. Interestingly, in different movies, both he and Philip Seymour Hoffman sported Oklahoma Sooners hats. In one instance, he wore it in the longest yard, while Hoffman donned it in Twister. During the making of 100 Rifles, there's a story involving a certain actress. The producers wanted her to shower under a water tower without a shirt, but she stood her ground, opting to keep her shirt on for the scene. Years later, he remarked that her defiance was twice as captivating, appreciating her independent stance. Beyond his roles, he was also considered for significant parts in films like Taxi Driver and Midnight Run, originally intended for Robert De Niro. This sheds light on his potential range and the influence he could have had in different cinematic landscapes. In his personal life, he was seriously involved with Inga Stevens shortly before her suicide in 1970. This relationship remained a private matter for him, as he refused to discuss it publicly. Professionally, he expressed a preference for directing over acting, regretting not taking on more directing roles as he grew older. One notable performance of his is in the film Sam Whiskey, where he played the character Sam Whiskey. This role was recognized as his first serious attempt to be funny, according to a review by Time Out. Overall, his career saw a mix of personal challenges and professional achievements, shaping his journey in the entertainment industry. A big fan of Laurel and Hardy, he owned all their films on tape. He starred as Gator McCluskey in the film Gator, one of three movies featuring Lauren Hutton alongside him. The other films they shared were Paternity and Malone. In Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Sex But Were Afraid to Ask, he played Switchboard. He noted that Woody Allen, the director, never spoke to him during filming. In the world of Hollywood, there was an actor known for his rugged charm and tough guy persona. He caught the eye of many filmmakers, including those behind the adaptation of a popular graphic novel, where his image inspired a character. This actor was offered various roles that could have made him even more famous, but he often said no. For instance, he turned down a part in a romantic movie alongside a well-known actress, surprising many. Another big opportunity he passed on was to play a famous adventurer, a role that eventually became iconic with another actor. He also said no to portraying a charming figure in a biographical film. Even though he missed out on these chances, his unique acting style still has fans all around the world. People still talk about his famous roles and, and how he shaped entertainment. He may have turned down some big roles, but his influence on the industry is undeniable. In a classic small town movie, the main actor's strong appeal captured everyone's attention. Playing Sonny Hooper, he embodied the thrill-seeking spirit perfectly. But in one unforgettable scene, the star didn't take the big risk. Instead, a brave stunt performer jumped an incredible 232 feet without a parachute, making history in movies. Moving from action to drama, our mysterious main character starred as Jack Horner in a popular film from the past. Behind the scenes, a crucial moment was kept secret until the last minute. As the scene played out, extras were surprised by an unexpected line, causing half of them to leave in a hurry. And who could overlook the cool attitude of the bandit in another famous film? Our lead actor not only nailed his role, but also pushed for casting choices that made the whole movie shine. Bringing in Jackie Gleason as Sheriff Buford T. Justice was a stroke of brilliance that added lots of fun and laughter to the story, proving that sometimes surprising choices are the best ones. These stories just scratch the surface of the amazing career of a Hollywood star filled with smart decisions and creative choices. Each role and collaboration added to a lasting impact that still delights audiences today. The name Burt Reynolds isn't just a name, it represents great acting and timeless appeal forever remembered in movie history. In one role, he played Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, alongside Dolly Parton as Miss Mona. Their on-screen romance sparked controversy due to its departure from the real-life story. In another film, he portrayed Congressman David Dilbeck in Striptease, drawing inspiration from real-life politicians he had encountered through his father's law enforcement connections. His versatility as an actor shone through when he beat out hundreds of contenders for the role of Quint a spur on Gunsmoke. This role highlighted his range and talent in the entertainment industry. In portraying various characters throughout his career, he showcased a remarkable ability to connect with audiences on both the big and small screens. One notable role saw him as Jay Grobart in a film exploring the complexities of love and memory. Another memorable performance was as Jack Horner in a movie that highlighted his range as an actor. 
Transitioning seamlessly to television, he captivated viewers with his portrayal of Paul Anderson in a popular series. However, it was his role as Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd in a particular movie that truly left a mark. The casting process for this film was interesting, with filmmakers considering several well-known figures for key roles, adding to the excitement surrounding the project. Throughout his career, he left a lasting impression as one of the most talented actors of his time. His performances continue to inspire and entertain audiences, reminding us of the timeless allure of his talent. He once owned the Burt Reynolds Ranch, where scenes for Smokey and the Bandit were filmed. The property was later sold during bankruptcy. Additionally, he bought a mansion in Georgia while married to Lynn Anderson. In the movie Gator, he portrayed Gator McCluskey. During filming, Lauren Hutton would often flash the crew between takes, prompting him to ask her to stop due to distractions. In Smokey and the Bandit, he played the character Bandit. An espresso commercial in 2017 featured him alongside other iconic film characters, including George Clooney hitching rides with Kermit and Fozzie from the Muppet movie. In the world of film, a well-known actor left a lasting impression through his roles both on and off the screen. One of the notable characters he portrayed was Paul Crewe in The Longest Yard, where he led his team in an intense final game. Apart from acting, he had a love for horse racing, which reflected in his ownership of a racehorse named Cat Dancing, tied to his character in The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. During the filming of 100 Rifles, there was a moment that showcased his commitment to fairness. He stood firm against a scene involving blackface, opting to support a black stuntman instead. This decision highlighted his belief in equality and his willingness to take a stand for it. His influence is still felt in Hollywood today, a testament to his integrity and talent in the industry. In one notable role, he portrayed Bandit and Smokey and the Bandit. The interstate scenes were filmed along I-10 in Alabama's Baldwin County. During filming, he and Sally Field stayed at the Grand Hotel in Point Clear, south of Fairhope. Interestingly, Mobile Bay can be clearly seen in the distance during one scene allegedly set on a Mississippi interstate. He was initially the director's top choice for the lead in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. However, concerns about his mainstream appeal led to Jack Nicholson being cast instead, earning Nicholson his first Best Actor Oscar. Later, he declined the role of amorous astronaut Garrett Breedlove in terms of endearment, allowing Nicholson to win his second Oscar, this time for Best Supporting Actor. Sidney Lumet also wanted him for the main role in power, but he declined, leading to Richard Gere being cast instead. One individual who left a strong impression in the entertainment industry was a talented actor known for his role in the movie Deliverance. He not only showcased his acting skills, but also had a knack for spotting talent, like when he recommended a friend for a role in the film. Besides his acting gigs, he set up a theater workshop to help new actors learn and grow in their craft. His influence went beyond the screen, shaping the careers of many actors and leaving a lasting impact on the industry. His story is one of inspiration and influence resonating with all who love storytelling and performance. A well-known actor, often recognized for his use of a wig or a creative hair styling to cover his receding hairline, can be seen without these in several famous movies. In films like Sharky's Machine, City Heat, Stick, and Breaking In, his presence stands out, entertaining audiences with his different roles. In the movie Fuzz, he played the character of Debt, Steve Kerla, a role that got attention not just for his acting skills, but also for a memorable poster featuring him nearly bare on a rug, a picture similar to his bold 1972 centerfold for Cosmopolitan magazine. Another memorable scene was in The Longest Yard, where he played in a high-stakes game against Ray Nitschke, the respected Green Bay Packer, showing both his athleticism and acting ability. These moments confirm his status as a Hollywood legend, leaving a lasting impact on movie history. In the realm of entertainment, one figure stands out for his versatility and charm. He navigated through various roles, showcasing his talent in different genres. In a particular movie, he portrayed a character that revealed his depth and authenticity alongside a renowned actress who added drama to the narrative. Another film featured him as a dedicated cop, teaming up with a talented co-star to deliver a memorable performance. Before achieving stardom, he pursued an education while excelling in sports, particularly football. His athleticism on the field garnered attention until an unfortunate injury redirected his focus to the world of entertainment. Through his memorable performances, he left a lasting impression on cinema, inspiring many with his talent and charisma. His influence continues to resonate, reminding us of the impact he made on the silver screen.
In a close vote for Worst Supporting Actor at the 1997 Razzie Awards, he narrowly lost to Marlon Brando by just one vote. The role he was nominated for was in Striptease. Interestingly, the final vote that tipped the scales was cast by John Wilson, the founder of the Razzie Awards, who always saves his vote for last. He declined roles that later became iconic in Hollywood. He turned down the part played by Richard Gere in Pretty Woman, and also said no to the role eventually portrayed by Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Initially cast in the role of Richard Carlyle in Fond Why, he tragically passed away before filming commenced turned down the role of James Bond, believing that an American couldn't play the role. Later, he starred as Sonny Hooper in Hooper, where Hall of Fame Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Terry Bradshaw played one of the SWAT team members. Two years after, Bradshaw appeared alongside him in Smokey and the Bandit too as himself. In Smokey and the Bandit, he recommended Sally Field for the role of Carrie and convinced her to take it despite her initial reservations about the script's depth. His close circle included Johnny Carson, James Hampton, Don DeLuise, Jerry Reed, Charles Nelson Riley, Tammy Wynette, Lucy Arnaz, Adrian Barbo, Tawny Little, Dinah Shore, and Chris Ever. In Smokey and the Bandit, when Pat McCormick's character walks by the Bandit's truck and trailer, he comments, any guy that would paint their truck like that would go to a minister's funeral dressed in feathers. He did dress in feathers in Stroker Ace, portraying a NASCAR driver. In the best little whorehouse in Texas, he played Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd. He and his on-screen love interest Lois Nettleton co-starred in a 1972 Chicago stage production of The Rainmaker. In the late 1970s, a dynamic personality entered Atlanta's nightlife scene, bringing a fresh blend of entertainment and dining to a popular hotspot called Burt's Place. Located in the Omni International Hotel in downtown Atlanta's Hotel District, this venue quickly became a favorite among locals and tourists seeking great food and a vibrant atmosphere. Embracing innovation, this individual, known for a famous role in a beloved film, expanded their creative horizons beyond acting to create a unique experience for guests. Another version of their vision thrived briefly in Lenox Square, adding a new chapter to their culinary ventures. Their influence went beyond movies, leaving a lasting impact on the culture of their era. Their on-screen chemistry with a co-star, who played Sheriff Buford T. Justice, became legendary. Behind the scenes, their friendship was equally memorable, with amusing anecdotes adding to their camaraderie. Their generosity was as famous as their performances. In a gesture of friendship reminiscent of their on-screen adventures, this individual famously gifted a close friend with a replica of an iconic car symbolizing their bond. Through their ventures and friendships, this person created a lasting impact that continues to influence entertainment history. In the world of entertainment, one individual's journey stands out as a colorful tapestry woven with diverse talents and memorable achievements. He dazzled audiences not only as an actor, but also as a director, leaving an unmistakable imprint on the cinematic landscape. In his portrayal of Sonny Hooper, he showcased his daring skills as a stuntman extraordinaire, bringing laughter and excitement to audiences. The movie, a playful spoof on the suave James Bond, delighted viewers with its clever nods to espionage adventures. A few years later, he found himself in another Bond-inspired comedy, where he and his cohorts humorously parodied the iconic secret agent. Although the uncanny resemblance raised eyebrows, the film ultimately became a beloved classic, solidifying his reputation as a master of comedy and charm. Beyond the silver screen, he ventured into the culinary world, co-owning a trendy restaurant in Fort Lauderdale, a testament to his entrepreneurial spirit and diverse interests. But perhaps one of his most remarkable feats was his directorial debut in Gator, where he not only starred as the titular character, but also demonstrated his artistic vision behind the camera. It was a milestone moment that showcased his versatility and creativity. In summary, his contributions to cinema continued to be celebrated worldwide, reflecting his enduring impact on the entertainment industry. In a notable role as Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, he made a pivotal casting suggestion for the character of the governor. Although the producers initially leaned towards Mickey Rooney due to his singing and dancing background, he advocated for Charles Durning, believing that Durning's hidden talents would shine under director Colin Higgins' guidance. Hailing from Waycross, Georgia, he spent his formative years in Florida before venturing into the world of acting. One of his standout performances came in Deliverance, where he portrayed Lewis, a role he later hailed as the pinnacle of his career. He brought depth and authenticity to his characters, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and fellow actors alike. 
These instances showcase his keen eye for talent and dedication to his craft, solidifying his place in cinematic history. In the realm of Hollywood stories, one tale stands out for its blend of nostalgia, humor, and reflection. Following the filming of a particular movie, memories lingered in the mind of a prominent actor. A scene captured on film but deeply imprinted in memory held a special place in their heart. One evening, while lounging at home, a still from that scene caught their attention, evoking a mix of emotions. It seemed to speak of the actor's journey with a touch of humor and perhaps a nod to the challenges faced along the way. As time passed, the actor found themselves working alongside a familiar face once again, bringing their shared history and previous projects to the forefront. Their on-screen chemistry was undeniable, a result of years spent honing their craft together. It was a reminder of the enduring bonds formed in the bustling world of show business. Before achieving stardom, the actor had humble beginnings, a fact often overlooked amidst their glittering career. A surprising footnote in their journey involved a stint on a popular television show, a stark contrast to the leading roles they would later embody. Yet, it served as a reminder of the journey from humble beginnings to the heights of fame. In moments of reflection, whether pondering past roles, cherishing friendships, or reminiscing about the quirks of fame, the actor remained a figure of both legend and levity in the vast expanse of Hollywood history. And always above the bar in their home hung a silent reminder of the trials and triumphs of an actor's life. 